Okay, hi, my name is Isaiah. I'm Abby. And I'm Eleni. And this is our 182 CLC presentation on phytoremediation techniques and uses. So what is phytoremediation? Phytoremediation is defined as a technology that uses and manipulates plants to clean up contaminated and polluted environments. This can be done by taking advantage of characteristics of certain plants species to take up or metabolize the negative substances. By using these plants, the contaminants in the environment may be removed, immobilized, degraded, or transformed. The plants that are used are selected based on growth, biomass, and their ability to tolerate and take up the pollutant. There are five main types of phytoremediation. There's rhizofiltration, phytoextraction, phytotransformation, phytostimulation, and phytostabilization. Okay. So rhizofiltration. Rhizofiltration, or also known as phytofiltration, is a method that decontaminates groundwater instead of soil. This means that contaminants reside on the surface of the water and are removed via precipitation. The targeted substance is absorbed into the plant roots to be accumulated in the shoots and then it is harvested. Once these roots are harvested and then filtered, the plant may be given new shoots to continue its function of filtration. This process is typically used in greenhouses and is targeted, and the target su su targeted substances, excuse me, are heavy metals such as zinc uh, and iron. So photo extraction, um, also known as photo accumulation, is the most common type of photo, photo remediation techniques. It decontaminates the soil of heavy metals such as copper, lead, and zinc. Um, it is the process by which plants translocate heavy metals in the soil through absorption by the roots and storage in the leaves and stems. In order for this translocation to take place, the metals in the soil must be soluble, the roots, mu the roots must be able to absorb the metals, the metals must bind to the central atom of the metal in two or more places. This is known as being cleated. And the cleated metal can then be translocated. There are two types of photo extraction, induced and continuous. Induced photo extraction it occurs with a cleating agent, while continuous usually occurs in plants that are modified and are able to translocate and store high amounts of heavy metals. Okay. Phytotransformation. Phytotransformation or phytovolatilization uses plants to take up the contaminants of the soil and transform them into less to toxic substances, and then they are released through the stomata. More specifically, the contaminant is absorbed into the roots, it is modified through the xylem, and then it diffuses or is released by the leaves via transpiration. This method is especially effective in removing contaminants in shallow waters. Uh, so phytotransformation is mainly used in places such as ponds or wetlands. Um, some toxic chemicals that are removed by this method include uh, selenium, silver, and chlorinated solvents. Some specific plant species use include that of herb herbaceous trees and shrubs. Um, phytosimulation um, is also known as rhizodegradation. It is the process by which plants degrade contaminants in the soil. Um, this is basically plant-assisted bioremediation. The contaminants in the soil are broken down by microorganism activity from the roots and aerobic transformation. The contaminants are broken down into smaller products that are no longer considered contaminants, or they are mineralized into organic products such as water and carbon dioxide. These inorganic products can then be recycled back into the plant system. Groundwater can also become uncontaminated in this way. Phytostabilization is the process of which plants create a covering on the surface of the soil in order to prevent the movement of metals and other contaminants within the soil. This is important because it helps keep the nutrients in the soil while at the same time making sure there is not a great buildup of toxic components at the root level.
Different ways that phytostabilization can occur is through lessening the occurrence of windblown dust, minimizing erosion of soil, and through the reduction of solubility of soil contaminants. A key practice that is used to maintain phytostabilization is the addition of soil amendments. Examples of these soil amendments include phosphate agents, uh, phosphates, which are agents that make the soil more alkaline, biosolids, and other organic matter. When added to the soil, these amendments cause the soil to become less porous, and as a result, the metals and nutrients in the soil are less likely to pass through and into the groundwater tables. Um, some advantages and disadvantages of phytoremediation um, include on the advantages side that we have the ability to keep soil nutrient rich and in a usable state. It has fairly simple imp implementation process. It is cost efficient. And in addition to providing benefits to the soil, it also helps produce clean air and purify the groundwater. Um, on the disadvantages side, we have that it is uh, it has been found that the phytoremediation is time sensitive and relies heavily upon the seasons and on weather conditions. Also, the process is long and requires um, the land to remain undisturbed for an extensive period of time. So our society today is a very industrialized world. There are many vehicles, factories, and machines that are used at, at every moment that release pollutants into the atmosphere around us. A few examples of these pollutants include sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide, and these are released uh, by burning fossil fuels and gasoline. These toxins often cause headaches to many people and can contribute to sensitive populations. Um, air phytoremediation, or AP, uses remediation techniques to cleanse and purify this air with green plants. The plants that are used have abilities to filter out, degrade, and modify these pollutants to make the air more healthy and fresh. Uh, AP has many advantages. It does not cause secondary pollution. It is cheap and it is easy to implement. It uses photosynthesis to function, and it also fixes carbon dioxide in the process. And it is a natural way to clean the environment. Air phytoremediation is currently a technology just that's being studied and improved on every single day. It is primarily used to remove indoor pollutants um, in buildings, but scientists are attempting to develop ways to clean larger atmospheres in much bigger spaces um, in the air around us. Uh, with all these advantages of being a simple and natural method of cleaning our air, uh, air phytoremediation has the potential to become one of the most efficient mechanisms of treating the environment. Um, another example of how but phytoremediation is used is through the cleansing of water and soil. Um, healthy soil and clean water are essential to life. Humans and animals depend on clean water for life and soils, soil for plants to grow in. Because of pollutants from cars, factories, mining, and uses of ag agricultural pesticides and wastes, plants and animals um, are damaged and ultimately human health can become endangered. In a study done by Zijing University, the effects of phytoremediation were looked at and compared to other methods. In these other methods, such as landfill dumping or dumping sites and fixation or inactivation, the contaminants are not destroyed, but only altered from one form to another. In some cases, more, these altered forms are more dangerous than before. Phytoremediation is shown to be a cost-effective technology that cleans and maintains water and soil quality. While this technology seems to be effective so far, it is fairly new within the last 30 years, and basic research is still being done. Studies about which plants are the most effective for contaminants in water and soil is a big part of these research programs. This type of, type of phytoremediation is a type of detoxifying and cleansing that has great potential for pollutants in water and soil. And then there, those are our sources. Thank you for watching.